the mascot left. That's so good. This video is kind of all over the place, but here's a breakdown of its contents if you want to skip to a certain part. So the 1.5 inch rockets have been tested a few times, so it only seems logical to double it to three inches. So we got our uh, stock chucked in the leg, time to make the nozzle. With a larger size, the process is about the same as before. Pretty much turn it down, add O-rings, drill the throat, then cut the divergent and convergent. I threw up this piece of sheet metal because chips were just flying everywhere, getting caught in the wires and whatnot. Once the nozzle was done, it was wow. onto the bulkhead. This was just made out of aluminum. You can see me tap in some 5 8 horse thread. I'm gonna be using this as an igniter later that you'll see. Our fuel just came out of the oven. Basically, we're gonna weigh it, see if the weight changed at all and see if it's worth even drying in the first place because it's kind of a pain in the ass, that's another step. So, I'm gonna weigh it. I got the weight before, we're gonna test the weight after. Instead of the hot plate for these larger batches, I thought it'd be easier just to heat the whole thing up until it melted. This heat gun didn't have enough oomph to get it done, so I ended up just using the oven. Convection bake, constant temp, works great. With the first batch of fuel, I tried grinding the potassium nitrate, basically into a finer powder. This was gonna make it burn quicker. It has one huge disadvantage that it's horrible for casting. It's much thicker, you'll see in a second. The pickle jar works great, but I want something a little bigger now that we're mixing up the bigger rockets because it doesn't fit. In the meantime, this is like one of the protein powder jars. It's a uh, orange dreamsicle, great flavor. And that should be good. A little super glue. Spin it. I kind of expected this, but the motor does not have enough torque to spin this big guy. It's Man down. Okay. Um, we're at 100. So, in order to try to get this to spin, we're going to go from 9 volts to something higher and see if it melts the motor or we get some nice turning. works. Ooh. So if we just fried something. I should have disconnected there first. So we're just going to over chooch it. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot. It's getting warm. It's the kind of heat we're getting out of it. That's not bad. Okay, we're going to add 1% red iron oxide. 30 grams, down the hatch. That's gonna be the mixture before. So that little motor gave out, so I decided to just lay down the drill press and use a five gallon bucket as the mixture. Upgraded to the accessory belt and the powder inside, it worked quite well. Smooth, efficient mixing. We're gonna polish this guy up in order to reduce the likelihood the fuel sticks to the corn rod, and maybe we'll have to use less grease. As you can see, this mixture with the ground potassium nitrate is thick. It's like a brownie mix. I am even added a little bit of glycerin in here to try to thin it out a little bit before casting, but it didn't really do much. So here we are inserting the sleeves. Those outer metal casings are just basically to hold the casting tubes stable and so it doesn't deflect this inside. Here, you, you kind of got to scoop it in, really get the taps going, make sure there's no air bubbles. I've seen people cure this actually under pressure, but that's a whole nother apparatus I just didn't have at the time. There was a bit of overflow on this, so it made removing it from these metal tubes a pain in the butt. I decided this was the last time I was doing this since when I hit it out, it basically fell on the floor and chipped off a big chunk. I'm rendering it useless. You gotta be nearly there. Oh, shit. For the next test, we ditched the metal tubes, which was a pain to remove. So we had to roll up the paper thicker so it could free stand by itself. In this case, we went with 0.014 inches construction paper and craft glues to give even distribution of that adhesive. Now, when it was fully rolled up, it was one solid tube, so it was kind of nice. Instead of inserting the corn rod after the fuel was poured, I decided to have the corn rod already in place this time. So I drilled this 1 8 inch hole in this block of wood, and then we just pounded it in place, slathered up some synthetic grease since it does a good job not sticking, and hot glued that cardboard tube basically to the base of this uh, block of wood. This is gonna be a disaster. Here we are, oh, oh, grabbing oh, the fuel oh. out of the oven. Shit was way too hot, I should have had some thicker gloves on. Yeah, it just, it was just soaking through those gloves. And, you know, get the spatula out of there. 
I should have also cut down the corn rod, but I don't know if I was gonna make a longer one in the future, which made pouring this thing a pain in the butt. So cutting down the corn rod, adding a funnel, that would have been big. As you see, it feels going everywhere, but it cleans up easily. My friend Cole helped me scoop it in here. So now that it's all filled up, basically just wiped off the excess. That way you won't have to chip it away once it's you know hardened and it can actually fit into the rocket motor. After we cut it flat, time to check the density. Coming in at 2594, which uh, accounted for the paper and the glue. I estimated the glue. We're at 99% ideal uh, density of can SP, so we should be good to go there. Um, no big voids, and uh, ready, to, ready to set it up and fire. So with this larger diameter motor, I decided to go with a different kind of igniter. The hot gases are gonna be flowing towards the nozzle. It's gonna be a nice stream of fire. This is basically like a mini sugar motor inside the larger. Okay, gonna be threaded into the bulkhead this time instead of coming up from the nozzle end. So, I uh, just got this packed with the standard rocket candy with a hole drill in it, so I hope it's like a little mini rocket itself. Okay. Now Lowe's only carried 5 8 inch bolts and that's the largest cap I had, but ideally you'd go a little bigger here, I think it'd be easier, you know, like an inch. Because you could just, you could get a better motor fit in there, and uh, there's plenty of room in the bulkhead, so. Here we are painting on the ignition powder. This is charcoal and potassium nitride mixed with isopropyl alcohol to make it paintable. And this just helps uh, quicken the ignition of the rocket. Putting the grains in, they're separated by O-rings, get the ends to ignite properly. Lube everything up. This makes installation and cleaning easier later. Make sure the O-rings are on there, nothing's too twisted. It was a little tight, but nothing got caught. You gotta be careful of those holes. Sometimes it cuts off a little bit of the O-ring, but we were good here. Here we are installing the shear bolts. This prevents it from turning into a pipe bomb and it will basically shear before the actual tube blows up given that everything goes to plan. Installing the bulkhead slash igniter. Since it will be pushing down on the load cell, I had to install it before I put it on the test fan. And then we just are adjusting the bolts to make sure everything is level and it's not gonna go all haywire on us. It was at this point I realized I didn't have an SD card for the data recording. So I went back and grabbed another one and we happen to change parking lots for the actual test in the next scene. The three inch are hooked up. Running to our deck. Here we are, our first three inch. This is gonna be a short load, 20 inch of the fuel, just to, you know, test the systems. What do you think? We're in the parking lot. Hopefully nothing goes wrong, but we got a fire extinguisher. <laughs> That's right. And I think we're pretty level. So let's run it. 